good day. Welcome to Mayor King's TV News. I am Matsu Okwemitorishe and here are the headlines. African Women Achievers Awards and Summit 2024 celebrates excellence in Kigali, Rwanda. NLC demands detained members released. 227,494 persons affected, 32,837 houses damaged in 27 states, NEMA. Delta government hands over 215 acres of land for university takeoff. Customs intercept 1.8 billion expired drugs. India protests intensify over doctors' rape and murder. Man United kick off Premier League season before Man City face new look Chelsea. Now the news in details. The inaugural African Women Achievers Awards and Summit 2024 held at the prestigious Onomo Hotel in Kigali, Rwanda. Over the weekend was a resounding success. The groundbreaking event brought together delegates from over 25 African countries to honor and celebrate the achievements of hardworking women across the continent. The summit, proudly sponsored by Mayor King's Agency Group, saw over 30 Rwanda citizens participate and receive recognition for their outstanding contributions, including a distinguished senator and the First Lady of Rwanda. Ambassador Dr. Temisan O. Lewis, CEO of Mayor King's Agency Group and organizer of the event, hailed the summit as a major milestone in promoting women's empowerment and excellence in Africa. This pioneering event marked a first for Kigali, Rwanda, and provided a unique opportunity for women from diverse backgrounds to share their experiences, network, and inspire one another. The African Women Achievers Awards and Summit 2024 is set to become an annual fixture promoting women's empowerment and excellence across Africa. The success of the event is a testament to the dedication and hard work of Ambassador Dr. Temisa O. Lewis and his team at Mayor King's Agency Group. Plans are already underway for next year's edition promising to be even bigger and more impactful. The high point of the event was the establishment of the African Women's Achievers Forum, AWAF, and the inauguration of the pioneer leadership structure, which saw Professor Dr. Mata Namjebo Tilahon as president of the forum, and Ambassador Dr. Numufomi Shegweni as executive secretary alongside country directors at this occasion. The NLC Labour Congress has accused the government of declaring war against the Union following the recent raid on its headquarters by security forces. At a press conference in Abuja on Thursday, NLC leaders rejected the police explanation for the invasion and demanded an apology as well as the return of seized items and the release of detained individuals. The NLC also criticized the government's attempts to interfere with the union's internal affairs, including a proposed reduction in the tenure of trade union leaders. They argued that this violated labor laws and the international conventions. Security agents had, on July 7th, conducted a night raid on the NLC National Secretariat in Abuja. According to the NLC spokesperson Benson Upa, the operative burst into the building at about 8.30 p.m. and arrested the security guards, forcing them to hand over keys to the officers on the second floor. While the DSS, through its spokesperson Peter Afunaya, denied involvement in the raid, the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Egwetekun, confirmed that the raid was carried out by the police, saying a terrorist involved in Sudanese crisis was traced to the Labour building. But at this press conference on Thursday, Labour leaders rejected the explanation by the police, insisting that the raid was illegal. 
He further said that the government therefore should not rope them into something they knew nothing about. Accordingly, he questioned the government to release those in its custody, including a NUEE executive, executive comrade of Palwal Ele Ojo, who was arrested at a social spot in Abuja. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, says a total of 227,494 persons are affected and 32,837 houses damaged by the flood in 27 states across the country. NEMA added that 16,488 acres of farmland with crops have also been destroyed. In a statement issued by NEMA spokesperson Ezekiel Manzo on Thursday in Abuja, the agency's director general Zubaida Umar said that NEMA would continue with public sensitization as well as grassroots awareness through the advocacies and workshops on solid waste management to raise public consciousness on the clearance of blood drainages and waterways. She advised state emergency management agencies and community leaders to be prepared for rapid flood response and reassure farmers not to panic about the temporary dry spell, stressing that it would end soon according to Nimet's predictions. She further advised communities at risk of flooding and those living along waterways to relocate to safer higher grounds ahead of the peak of the rainy season and called on all stakeholders, especially seamans and community leaders to be ready to activate at short notice plans and preparations for floods with the increasing incidents in some parts of the country. The Delta state government has handed over 215 acres of land to the federal government for the takeoff of the Federal University of Medical and Health Sciences, Kwale, Undokwa West Local Government Area. Speaking during the handing over of the land documents to the Minister of Education, Professor Tai Maman in Asaba, on Thursday, Governor Sheriff Oboyowori stated that the land was for the permanent and temporary sites of the university. The governor, who was represented by his deputy, Monde Oyeme, while handing over the certificate of occupancy for the land to the minister, Represented by the Director of Education, Mrs. Rakia Gambo, thanked the Federal Minister of Education, Professor Tai Maman, for finding them fit to be host to a federal university. While also handing over the General Hospital Kwale as the teaching hospital for the university, he said the establishment of a federal university has been the dream of the people for many years and now it has come to fruition. Now on the business news, the Nigeria Customs Service Apapa Area Command has said it intercepted 12 containers of expired and controlled pharmaceutical products worth over 1.8 billion naira. In a statement on Thursday, the Comptroller General of Customs Adewale Adeniyi disclosed this while displaying some of the seized contraband at the command in Apapa, Lagos. Adeni stated that if the drugs were allowed to exit the ports, it would undermine the security of the nation by influencing the behavior of individuals involved in criminal activities often fraud by illicit drugs such as tramadol. He added that aside from being expired, some of the seized drugs were imported without undergoing the necessary regulatory requirements such as obtaining a national agency for food drugs administration and control number. The CGC stated that some containers were also seized due to false declarations to evade duty payments, which amounts to smuggling. Adeni, however, commended the command for working with him on this anti-smuggling exploits. Now on the foreign news. Protests have intensified in India after a mob vandalized a hospital where a female trainee doctor was raped and murdered in West Bengal state. The hospital was attacked on Wednesday during the massive reclaim 
the 9th March held in Kolkata city to protest against the brutal crime. Smaller protests were also held in many Indian cities like Delhi, Hyderabad, Mumbai and Pune. Meanwhile, the Indian Medical Association, IMA, the country's largest grouping of doctors, has announced a nationwide strike of non-emergency services on Saturday. Doctors' associations in other cities and political parties in West Bengal have also planned matches on Friday and over the weekend to protest against the attack. Through the protests were largely peaceful, clashes erupted between the police and a small group of unidentified men who bagged into the ROG car hospital, the site of the crime and the ransacked its emergency ward. So far, the Kolkata police have arrested 19 people in connection with the incident. Now on the sports news. Manchester United kick off the 2024-2025 Premier League season at home to Fulham on Friday before Manchester City begin with the defence of their title at free spending Chelsea on Sunday. New Liverpool manager Arnold Slot will be under the spotlight on Saturday with a trip to newly promoted IP Switch for his first competitive game since succeeding Jürgen Club. AFP Sports looks to what to expect from the opening weekend of the new season. Meanwhile, Liverpool are yet to make a single signing into the transfer window, but have seen but have been rampant in pre-season with eye-catching wins over Arsenal, United and Sevilla. Now the recap on the headlines. African Women Achievers Awards and Summit 2024 celebrates excellence in Kigali, Rwanda. NLC demands detained members released. 227,494 persons affected. 32,837 houses damaged in 27 states, NEMA. Delta government hands over 215 acres of land for university take-up. Customs intercept 1.8 billion Naira expired drugs. India protests intensify over doctors' rape and murder. Man United kick off Premier League season before Man City face new look Chelsea. That's the news as edited by Emanuela Timiala. I am Matu Okwemitoriche. Thanks for watching.